All right, my wine drinking friends, we are back with another episode of Best Wines Under $20, except this time we are doing red wines for summer. If you are new around here, I'm here to help you spend less money on better wine. Also, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe below for more Wine 101 and wine recommendations right here every week. As we all know, 4th of July is quickly approaching, so let's talk about some of my favorite reds to chill on the patio and pair with grilled foods. Okay, so first of all, you might be thinking, wait, you chill red wine? Yes, sometimes you do. So stick around until the end to find out when and why. All right, so let's go get our first wine out of the fridge where it has been chilling for about 90 minutes. I didn't shut the fridge. All right, we are opening our first bottle. Introducing our first wine, this 2016 Cru Beaujolais from Moulin Vin, made by one of my favorite producers, Mason Lianvoy. The grape is Gamay, and it's about $18. The grape, Gamay, makes wines that are fruity, light, and delicious. It kind of gives me that wine cooler or red Kool-Aid vibe with a lot of red berry fruits and refreshing acidity that literally make it perfect to just throw in a cooler full of ice. Mason Lianvoy is a producer that I learned about last winter for their Pinot Noir, and I just discovered their Gamay. So these guys are champions of under the radar grape growers that are often organic or biodynamic. And some of their vineyards are literally feet away from more fancy, famous, and expensive vineyards. Moulin en Vin is one of 10 Cru Beaujolais. So a Cru is basically a ranking system that determined that there are 10 exceptional spots to grow Gamay in Beaujolais. Moulin en Vin is known as the King of Beaujolais because it has the most full bodied structured wines of the 10 Cru's. And one more thing, Wine and Spirits also named Mason Lianvoy a winery to watch in 2015. Okay, you're probably gonna ask yourself, why have I not been drinking this my entire life? It is so juicy. It smells like red and blackberries, orange rind, and then there's like this wet stone minerality situation going on. The wine literally floods your mouth with black cherry raspberry flavors and has some really nice savoriness to it too. Seriously, so delicious. All right, as far as food pairing goes for grilled food, I would just go straight up hot dog with this. Like delicious hot dog on a bun with some ketchup and some mustard, solid. All right, my friends, we are moving right along to wine number two that is perfect to chill on a hot summer day. From Willamette Valley, Oregon, this is a 2018 Averine Pinot Noir for about $19. All right, this bottle is a gem for the price. So as you might know, Oregon is the place for Pinot Noir in the United States, and Willamette Valley is one of their most well-known AVAs or regions. An AVA, an American viticultural area, means it's a grape growing region with specific geographic or climactic features that affect how grapes are grown and then distinguish it from the surrounding regions. Okay, also something really cool to know is that the Willamette Valley has some of the nation's most protective land use policies. Two thirds of its vineyards are farmed sustainably and over half organically. That is a lot. So that basically tells us that they care about the land, they care about what they're farming, what they're using in their farming, and then essentially what we're putting in our bodies. So these grapes are sourced from six of Willamette Valley's sub-AVAs and well over a dozen vineyards to create a blend that is perfectly balanced. So this is such a great representation of Willamette Valley as a whole because it sources its grapes from multiple vineyards and sub-AVAs. All right, it smells and tastes so pretty. There's a lot of plum and raspberry going on. Also, I get dried herb and like wafting baking spices. This wine totally over delivers for the price. It's got lighter tannins and really nice acidity. So that combined with its light fruit flavors make it perfect for the cooler at your barbecue. So if we're gonna compare the first wine and the second wine, I would say the first wine is a little more complex. There's a bit more earth and savoriness going on in this combined with the fruit flavors. And then this Pinot Noir is just more fruit, more red and purple fruits, and not as much earth or savoriness. So if you're not into that sort of thing, then this is kind of your, your more fruity bottle. All right, we're moving right along. Wine number three. We're gonna go a little bit heavier on this one. Introducing this 2016 Clinker Brick Old Vine Zinfandel. We are going to the Lodi region in California, so you'd actually not chill this wine as much as the other two, but we'll get to more on that after this bottle. Zinfandel is a classic pairing for barbecue. The ripe, bold, spice-driven, and jammy flavors in Zinfandel complement the tangy and sweet and savory flavors of barbecue sauce, 
perfectly. Okay, so Lodi is a killer spot for over 100 year old Zinfandel vines that survived past prohibition, some even date back to like 1888. So old vines like these have lower yields and smaller berries, which create a more complex and bold wine with lots of concentrated, rich, and dark fruit. Okay, so we've definitely got a more full-bodied wine here more luscious jammy fruit there's also this sweet tobacco situation going on with some cocoa i also get a lot more oak on it than i did the other two so for me this is kind of like my end of the night slightly chilled red wine like i'm not gonna start off with a zinfandel but i'm definitely gonna end with a zinfandel okay so let's discuss why chill your red wine in the first place in general think of it like drinking a warm beer versus an ice cold one Meh. you taste different things and the mouthfeel is totally different Temperature actually plays a huge part in how a wine tastes, so it can mute or accentuate a wine based on the wine's different components. So in general, for summer, instead of a bold red with higher alcohol and those thick chewy tannins, our grilling outdoor situation calls for a chillable, bright acidity, lower alcohol level, under 13%, and some juicy fruit flavors. So how do you know when to chill a red wine? A simple way to know is to split up your red wine into two categories. So high alcohol and low alcohol, which is literally found on the back and front or front of every bottle. Usually lower alcohol wines will be lighter, leaner, and have fruity flavors with higher acid. And if you wanna know why that is, check out this video. You can cool lighter reds down to traditional white serving temperatures, so between 49 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit, because it can brighten the acidity, it can enhance the structure, and show off more of those floral aromatics. Usually, our big bold reds are served at room temperature. You don't really want a big red with a higher alcohol level to get too cold, because chilling them can increase sensations of tannin, and it'll make the wine bitter and sharp. So that's why fuller bodied tannic wines like Bordeaux and Napa Cabernet taste better a little warmer. So you keep them for a maximum of 40 45 minutes in the fridge. Red wine that's too cold tastes dull, but when it's too warm, it tastes flabby and alcoholic, so you really need to find the balance here. For lower alcohol wines, just throw them in the fridge for 90 minutes, or if you're like me and impatient, 20 minutes in the freezer or an ice bath in a bowl, and remember to do equal parts water to ice. So I'll put a link in the description to a page with all of the right temperatures for different wines. Thank you for watching another episode of Great Wines Under $20. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe for more wine recommendations and wine chat. And if you've had any of these wines before, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. And if you haven't, check out your local wine stores to stock up for the 4th of July.